Okay, thank you, Luca. Thanks, everyone. I'm Alessandro Frigeri, and I'm a researcher. I work at the Italian National Institute for Astrophysics in Rome, and I have a background in geology, and uh, I always liked to not to be just a geologist, but also stay into the, um, in the field of uh, technology and the application of that. So, this is a picture of me 20 years ago. <laughs> and it comes from the first international Grass JS conference. <laughs> it was my first talk ever, and after 20 years, I'm here. And it's interesting. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I'm still here. And. Uh, at that time, I just got graduated as a geologist. And thanks to free open source, it was possible at that time, 20 years ago, for a student to develop a field book made on Palm OS by wiring a GPS thanks to open format or open protocol that was the NMEA or GPS, and going in the field to record directly vector data, GRASS.js vector data. And I was the most happy student in the world doing that. And so seeing that this conference is happening after 20 years, uh, I have colleagues and friends that were there here, but also youngsters like Luca or even younger guys that are keeping this uh, tradition is the best thing. So, uh, relating to this, uh, uh, this aspect, I was amazed because last year on Mars happened something. Those are images from uh, uh, Mars 2020 mission to, um, of, of, from NASA. And what you see is the, is the shadow of the copter. And, uh, the frames are images from the navigation camera taken. And this is 30, 30 seconds flight. So this is the copter. And the copter is, co is so-called a technological demonstrator. So it's not an instrument. Uh, it's not scientifically recognized as, a, as an experiment. But it runs a free open source operating system. And the flight software is free open source itself. And moreover, this software is not developed for copter, just for copter, but also used in CubeSat, so it's reusable. And the last thing is that all the hardware is off the shelf, meaning that if we want, we can build our copter that flies on Mars on Earth. And this is, uh, this is amazing because it's a kind of evolution of, of this philosophy of maximizing the use of open, the open protocol and open uh, uh, technology in this case. So, but we are here for geospatial. So for this reason, when I was a student, a GIS definition was this one and is still this one on Wikipedia. So, um, a GIS is, uh, is our system. We, are all, we all know what, our, what GIS are, but the definition is really tied to, 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 the, to, the, to the management of the environment of the place where we live. And so the definition, for example, in Wikipedia is, uh, is relating to, to a tool to support uh, the city and regional planning. So. Um, is not really related to, to planetary in this case, the definition. So is geospatial, um, is geospatial, uh, I'm not reaching, uh, I'm not reaching the, the downward. <laughs> okay. So, I'm sorry, so I'm not reaching the downward arrow. 
So if you, if you, if you hit the F key, it will be full screen. Thanks. Here we go. So, thank you. So, um, so is your special linked hardwired to planet Earth? So, this was the question. When I was a student, say, okay, you are a student in geology. Are you studying Mars? This is not the place for you because it's, it, this is the Earth Science Department. Okay. So, the question is, uh, is your special linked to the Earth, and so we have to tweak it to use it in planetary. And as a researcher, we must stand on the shoulder of the giants. And so in the case of terminology, the best master is Socrates. Let's say that wisdom is in the de definition of terms. So this just special applied to something different to, to the Earth is something that was of interest at least for a student at, at first, but also just before the human exploration, we have a um, debate in the 60s. So in the 60s, this is, this is a paper from Luciano Ronca, which was a planetologist, which was uh, researching the, 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 the correct use of geology, geography for planetary exploration. And in particular, there were some authors that say, okay, if we are going to the moon, we are not using geography or geology. We are using selenology, for example. We, we have to, dis to use distinct terms. But in this paper, Luciano Ronca defend the idea that the original definition in Greek of geo is uh, not just the earth, and the earth is not the first definition, the main definition, but geo means land terrain, home, the place where we do activities. So the result of this more research is that geospatial is good also for planetary. Say that we can go with now our geospatial knowledge outside of our planet. And this is an infographics from National Geographic. I found it beautiful because it, it really um, communicate the amount of missions that we had in these last 50 years in the solar system. Each of the line is a mission. If you see, for example, on the moon, we had like 70 missions, on Mars, more than 50, and so on. And this is, this is interesting because it is something that happened since 50 years. And since, since 50 years, we are exploring the solar system. And now that we know that geospatial is good for solar system or well for exploration, we just introduced maps. And so every time we, we speak about exploration, we speak about maps. Because maps are needed to explore, either on the Earth, but also on the planets. And uh, this is true for two reasons. One, the map synthesizes the data we acquire. So for example, in the case of planetary exploration, we have sensors, and we synthesize the sensors in maps. And also, we use map to plan other exploration. So map and geospatial is critical in all kind of exploration, Earth-based or planetary. But how does this data look? Yesterday, the president of the International Society for Photogrammetry and Remote Sensing tell us that they even had to change the name to the association because they started from the local scale. They started small from, the, from just a local environment. And then the photogrammetry went on uh, an airborne, uh, mm, mm, for example, on an airplane, and then it uh, there were the satellite. So for planetary, it is exactly the contrary. It is the opposite. In planetary science, we start from uh, really far away, or well, with, uh, with remote sensing, with a resolution that was, for example, this is Mars, 
and this is a Gale Crater in 1987 with the Viking uh, mission. And, uh, um, after, and then we have an improvement of the technology in time. And this is a European Space Agency mission to Mars, ExoMars. The camera is, comes from the um, German Aerospace Center. And the resolution is much more better, 10 times better. And we see that Gale Crater, in this case, is much more uh, resolved. We, have, we, we see much more details. But technology improves, and we have another mission which introduces another instrument that reaches 30 centimeter per pixel. And this is the resolution we are used to, to have on Mars, for example, which is a lot, if you think, for a body of the solar system which we, with all these uh, uh, features on, on it. And the red arrow points um, a kind of box or something strange, which, which is not natural. And it is not natural, because, not because it is an alien, but because it is a rover. So in this picture, you see the um, MSL, which is the Mars Science Laboratory Curiosity which is the rover which returns images from the surface of Mars. So it is the exact, the exact opposite of what uh, we, we heard about the, the, the Earth for photogrammetry. So we are, we are, having some, we are returning really high resolution data now from Mars and, uh, and the Moon and, and the planets, and this is very interesting for Phos4G, because with the data, we are able to do great things. So where, where is this data? Or well, the question is, where is this data stored? Is that available or not? Can we access it? So um, the, in, in the 90s, or well, in the, in the 80s, NASA discovered that the risk of losing data was very high as the archive grew. So the solution that they found was that data cannot be closed, even if it costs a lot. So the open data concept was not there, but the risk of losing data made NASA develop the planetary data system, which is a system made of nodes, which are typically uh, driven by a subject, uh, uh, managed by an uh, expert in a subject, where the data is stored in a kind of open format, and the format is known, and also sometimes you have the software to access the, so the, 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 um, the data if needed, and everything is available since the beginning of the PDS. So for example, we can access today this data, the data, for, for, for example, from the 60s, or from the 70s, sorry. So, this is the data, and uh, the PDS data had the characteristic to be readable, but you had to convert. And there is just one software that uh, deals directly with the, with the PDS. It's called Integrated Software for Images and Spectrometers, or ISIS, which has like 30 years of development uh, behind, now 40, I think. And uh, it, it is a very specialized software which takes the raw data from the sensors and the geometry from the attitude of the spacecraft. And with the camera model, it reconstructs the projection on a surface on a cartographic reference system. And it allows to produce um, frame, projected frames and from that projected frames, mosaics. And the mosaics are the base for producing derivative product and science, basically. So, this integrated software for images and spectrometers is now developed on GitHub as a collaborative um, platform for development, and it is open source. In 2006, we have the first steps that brings out the data directly into the Goodall, or well, directly into the FOS4G software stack. And uh, this comes from, from, from improvements given in Goodall about uh, 
PDS, so planetary data system filter to, to get the data directly into our GIS, ISIS filter to get ISIS data directly into GIS, and also VCAR and FITS, which are specialized format for astrophysicists. So this comes from scattered contribution. For example, uh, Trent Terre from USGS has, has, has taken care about the PDS uh, read and write. And Sebastian Walter from Freie, Freie Universität Berlin take, took care about the Vicar filter. And Chiara Marmo from the University of Paris, Sud, was developing the geofits. So it's interesting that during the years we shifted the, uh, seamlessly from these specialized data, special from space, into GIS. So once we have the data into our system, we need the reference system. And this is, was a pain in the neck for a while. But now, since last year, things are becoming to, to, to flow more naturally. And starting from version 8.2 of ProJ, if you are able to, or if you use the terminal to, to use ProJ, to, to the tool, the, 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 the Swiss Army knife for projection, you ask for IAU 49900, and you get the geographic reference system for Mars. So for those of you who are not using the terminal, because I imagine that someone you doesn't use the terminal, this is the idea. Since last year, until last year, we had to deal with the, when we are using LATLONG, we use this EPSG code, which is European Petroleum Survey Group for 326, which means LATLONG, which was the same thing that we had to use for Mars for a while because nothing else was available. The problem is that, that since the radius is different, we had to make some tricks, ask the developer to, to change something, but this, this something was not changed everywhere. So it was difficult. Hopefully, if ProJ, when, since ProJ now supports planetary, we are passing from EPSG 4326, which is good for the Earth, for WGS 84, to IU 4990. The radio is right. We can use the tool we always used, and the measurements are correct. The same philosophy is for, for example, for the moon, IAU 30100, which is a code related to the, to the position in the solar system. If you read the documentation, you, you will see that. So this is a big achievement, because it means that we are, we are really start to have a seamless use of GIS in the solar system concentrating on the efficiency of software and not on fixing uh, or hardwiring things here and there in the code. So in this table, I just give you an idea of what is on the desktop of the planetary scientist in terms of Phosphor-G, of course. So uh, the, first, the first instrument is ISIS. Uh, which is the integrated, uh, uh, which is the processing software that I tell you before, that I told you before, which is licensed with uh, uh, Creative Commons Zero. And then we have the NASA M Stereo Pipeline, which is a super cool software that from stereo couples produces DTM. So of course, um, since a laser altimeter costs a lot to be sent uh, on the planet, sometimes, often, we use the overlapping frames to produce DTM on, on planets. And the, the NASA AIM stereo pipeline is the reference now, and it's very good. And it's also open source and developed on GitHub. Then we have a very specialized tool, which is Kraterstat, that uh, maybe none of you know about, but now is open source. And basically, it was kind of not proprietary, but closed into a virtual, like IDL virtual machine for 20 years, and it was not possible to, do, to, to extract that. And now it is rewritten re re in Python, so it has really re reborn. 
And then we have QGIS and GrassGIS that are the desktop GIS that will benefit from this improvement of GDAL and ProJ. Another thing is that the services are going to work very well with these improvements. And so, for example, USGS Astrogeology Program in Flagstaff, Arizona has got 200, almost 200 layers of WMS of the solar system. And uh, it's 199, actually. And uh, also a stack server, because uh, now redundancy of, of, of data on Mars and the Moon starts to be interesting to, to be analyzed. Another aspect that I uh, will bring to you today are the community effort in terms of Phosphor-G in planetary. And here in Europe, we have Aeroplanet 2024. It is European Union funded program to promote the planetary science in Europe. And there is a project of this program called GMAP, which organizes a winter school where it is only required to use free open source software to participate. And in particular, QGIS is used for geologic mapping for interpretation, has been used. And um, that's interesting because all the students run into problems somehow, and then it was a chance to gather possible problems with planetary, which hopefully will be fixed soon. And it was a good opportunity for the students. And the last event, it was like 100 or more uh, students doing mapping on, on planets. So this was, this was interesting. Another, another community effort is given by Open Planetary, which is a nonprofit association. This is international, based in France, where uh, uh, the idea is like to produce tutorial to produce uh, uh, seminars and also uh, we organized the, the open planetary data cafe within the planetary science congress so it is a space where especially young people but uh, everyone like the scientists can come and uh, and speak about software and data in the in the in the view of open data and open source software so this open planetary is a kind of interesting initiative. Of course, the community is very small because planetary science community is smaller respect with the Earth. But we had the first effort just before the pandemic to organize a joint, a joint session between open planetary and OSGEO at, in Vienna at EGU to see what was the response of the community. So, this is something that uh, it will be interesting as uh, the, um, the software will support more and more planetary in future. Um, the last example that I will bring you are the collaborative mapping effort that I am really happy to report to you that the last uh, mission to Mars, like Mars 2020, the geologic map has been produced on a grid. So every, every scientist has got uh, one or more quads to develop. And the same we did for ExoMars. Unfortunately, ExoMars was uh, delayed. The, the European Space Agency mission to Mars that was supposed to be launched in September has been delayed. But the geology, ge geology interpretation, the geologic interpretation was made on the, on the collaborative uh, grid as well. Which is, what is good it is that this work was done in MMGIS, which has been developed at JPL for Mars 2020, and, Exoma, and uh, ExoMars, which came afterwards, where, which, is, which the mapping came afterwards, was able to acquire this software and do the, geologic, the collaborative geologic mapping with a free open source software without having to develop that from scratch. And that is kind of important. So to wrapping up everything, I must say that software and data are the elements of GIS, generally speaking. And this is true on the Earth and on planetary. But the experience, or my experience in these 
these last 20 years, both for OpenStreetMap for FOS4G or GFOS in Italy, is that with FOS4G, and we have this kind of element, which is the people. So we are speaking about software project always, and not just software. We, are, we have the people using the software, and we want the people use the software, because otherwise the software is not useful anymore. So this is something which is true also for planetary, and we see that uh, free open source software for planetary, uh, for geospatially in planetary science is, is, is working and is working well. So the future, of course, if you are using free open source software for, geo, for, uh, for geospatial, we have to contribute and use the software, amount the software, remount the software, write documentation. We know, we know our duties. But the future is very interesting. And the future comes, for example, next Monday, there will be the first Artemis mission to the moon. And Artemis is a, is a, is a big program to bring back the humans to the moon. And uh, it will be interesting, it will be very important to, to, to follow what's happening uh, with Artemis because it will, uh, it will give some kind of interesting opportunity. And these opportunities are kind of synthesized in this uh, uh, artistic, uh, uh, artistic rendering of the moon, of the moon village, let's say, uh, from ESA, which represent something that uh, um, reminds us the definition of GIS we had uh, on Wikipedia. So GIS is as the tool to map uh, things, infrastructure, and plants and things that are related to human activity and exploration. So with this picture of Apollo 17 with an astronaut and his vehicle, I think is, he was thinking, okay, if only I had the GPS or something like that. I thank you very much and I'm open to questions.